Verse 20, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. Okay, I want you to pay attention now. This is going to be like a sermon. You got a quarter wiped out from God. You got a third more wiped out from God. So the remaining people who were not killed by these plagues, you would think that by now you should get the memo and I'm going to fear God and I'm going to repent and get right with you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, you're wrong. Yet repented not the works of their hand. Did you read that? This is describing, this is perfectly describing modern century today. Yeah. Yeah. The work of their hands, what we built. I worked so hard in teaching in the schools, the scientists in their labs. I worked so hard creating experiments and making great waves and won the Nobel Prize. And then technology, I worked so hard with my hands and then with my hands I was able to create these technology that all of America and the world was able to enjoy. See that? This is their idol. They are God. All that they built with their hands, they did not repent of what they made. They did not repent. Keep reading. That they should not worship devils. See that? Uh, if you look at Revelation 2, you notice that it mentioned they will, uh, we, we talked about it. These people will worship before thy feet shortly, right? So then, if we're going to take it by that context at Revelation 2, worship does not necessarily mean all the time then that it has to be someone that you uh, revere as God himself. Worship can refer to like a high reverence as exaltation, so to speak. So exalting, revering. So if that's the case, it, aren't we living in a day and age where through the work of their hands, they put something at a higher elevation more than God himself? Oh, yeah. That's idolatry. See, that's worship to God. That's false worship to God. Right. Worsh and that's worshiping what? Devils. Worshiping devils. And idols of, look at what America built. Idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood. Look what America has made with their hands. The world has made with their hands. They practically worship, they worship science. Science is the God of their creation. They don't believe in God creating the heaven and the earth, but they're not brave enough to say it that science is God to them. Science is their God, their creation. The work of their hands, what they have built, that's what they revere and spend time more than on Jesus Christ himself. They do worship someone. And what I mean by that, it does not necessarily have to mean that you have to be religious. It's where you exalt something more than God himself, and that's idolatry in the eyes of God. Gold, silver, precious stones, all these elements, wood, brass, etc. What America and the world has built, they have lifted that high, higher than God. I'll tell you one thing. You have spent more time worshiping this one than spending time with God face-to-face -face worshiping Him. Now, what are you spending your time on, huh? What are you spending your time on? See that? Typical, wicked, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to hurt your feel feelings because I'm talking about myself too. You know, typical, you typical, wicked, evil Americans where you spend so much time where you, instead of having a family circle for prayer in the living room, you have a semi-circle around the flat screen TV. Yeah. Yeah. Now look what you're spending your time on, man. Instead of face-to-face -face with Jesus Christ, 101 through his word, it's face-to-face -face with this screen. The There's your idol of... Gold, silver, brass. Do you want a gold version for your iPhone? You want a silver version? Well, what do you want, man? Brass, wood, etc. What they have built with their buildings, their temples, and their schools, and pastors trying to build. We're going to build the kingdom of God with lavish buildings. Look at that, man. Idolatry all over, man. It's idolatry all over rather than Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to get off my sermon now. Notice the last part of verse 20, which can neither see. That's, they can't see you, nor hear. They can't hear you, nor walk. They can't walk with you. But Jesus Christ sees, hears, and you walk and talk with him. And you would kiss this sucker right here. And then the Bible mentions kiss the son lest he be angry. 
I'll tell you what kind of kiss you give him. You give him the kiss like Judas does as a betrayal to him. And you kiss the devil more. How about that? Verse 21. Man, I just want to harp on verse 20. America is like that, man. <laughs> Education, technology, they can't see, hear, or talk. But they're so stupid to believe that you were born and created from a rock. They elevate science so much that this is better than God. They trust in their government. They trust in their, uh, their logic, their science, their technology. And when reports came out, Y2K is going to hit, everybody thought it was the end of the world. And then guess what? It didn't happen. That was like God's joke. Ha ha at them. You know, you survived. You're doing fine. You all lose electricity. You, you panic. It's the end of the world. Come on. I think Abraham and Sarah did fine without electricity. Yeah. You know, we, we practice, I mean, this is the, man, I want somebody to preach a sermon on this one. We live by breathing, depending, relying our lives on what? Things that cannot see, hear, or walk with you. This is just how wicked, we're in a machine, we're in a system, man. This is just how wicked and evil we're living in. TV, education, technology, internet, and the stupid thing that you have in your purse or in your pocket right now. And we, worship, we practically worship these things, man. Maybe we should have a bonfire and just burn up every iPhone, bless God. <laughs> All right, anyways, anyways, now I'm being radical, okay? You, okay, I'm being unrealistic. Don't get mad, don't get mad. Verse 21, verse 21, neither repented they. Get, a, get the message, man. They don't repent. Yeah. Yeah, really. They don't repent, look at this, of their what? Murders. Look at that. Oh, we didn't murder. The tribulation will prove it that you murdered a lot of Christians over there. The tribulation will be proof that they murdered a lot of tribulation saints. And today the world is killing a lot of Christians. And God's judgment has been saving up for these countries that I'm going to bring judgment on you for the murders that you did to my people. Christian saint and tribulation saint. Look at the tons of abortion that's legalized and praised and condoned and pushed. Wickedness, man. Pure, disgusting, vile wickedness. They don't repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries. You know what's interesting about the word sorcery? Uh, if you, uh, do you know where we get the word pharmacy from? From a Greek word where sorcery came from. Pharma, etc. So the sorceries, it could be referring to a lot of the cricket things going on with our medication company. They don't repent of that. No, keep the business running. Big pharma, man. Big pharma. Taking the drugs, etc. As long as we get enough money. Not only that, the black magic, cults, witchcraft, sorcery in the eyes of God. Your judgment's coming. That's right. Harry Potter books. Oh, innocent fantasy. They don't <laughs> repent of their sorcery. They don't repent of that. They keep condoning it, coddling it, praising it. Nor of their fornication. Yeah, ain't that a no-brainer? Yeah, Amer we live in a day and age that uh, they think that you should have at least slept with somebody by your 20s. If you're not married, that's the common, not, that is wickedness sent from hell. Wickedness sent from hell. It is evil. And then now they're condoning all kinds of perversions now. They're doing homosexuality and then all this kind of LGBTQ, X, Y, and Z and all the colors of the rainbow, man. So all this kind of sexual perversion, they don't repent of it. It's wicked. Hard-hearted. You see these uh, bunch of sodomites after, you know, New Orleans received their hurricane in the middle of their parade? You think that's a sign from God. No, they didn't repent of their fornication. Right after the hurricane hit, they all insisted and they marched down the street proudly, proudly in their sin and their lifestyle. Wickedness. Wickedness. Man, pastor, you're angry. Cool down a bit. You know what? Concerning this kind of wickedness where you're so stubborn and you refuse to see the truth and you refuse to repent, I can't help but get angry. I mean, God's mercy and grace was so long for you for the past 2,000 years. You don't get the memo, man. He's giving you air to breathe so that you can have a chance to repent. You've taken his name in vain. You sin every day in your thought, in your lifestyle, and you're proud of it too. While 
putting down his book, trampling it on the dirt, and you expect that God go easy on you after that. That there's, oh, you shouldn't be angry about it? No, that's righteous indignation. I'm not going to be a softy going, oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. Like all the other churches are doing. That's why sin grows. Mm -hmm. Nor of their thefts, the last part of verse 21. No kidding, man. They're robbing you of your money, man. They're robbing you of your money. The taxation, you know, where your hardworking money is going, stealing from you, putting that money where what? Supporting some sodomite agenda? Teaching evolution garbage in the schools? Big capitalists where they try to get off the money doing sneaky things. The elites as well where they get richer and richer. Yeah. Poor get poorer and poorer. Where you dig into the conspiracies and all that. Why is that? Money, money, money. The crooked pastors and the Roman Catholic Church, including the charismatic idiots who keep saying, send in your uh, love money and God will shower a blessing on you. Man, you disgust me, man. You disgust me using religion, using Jesus' name to rip off money from people. So what? So that the, they can be cured of cancer, can get healing by sending a love offering to you. It's disgusting, man. Disgusting, wicked, man. Thefts, they didn't repent. That's America. Welcome to America. Welcome to our world today. This is the world. They will not repent. Despite of what? Despite of this. No matter how much, you, so think about this. No matter how much you pray, you weep, you show your testimony, you show love, and you use all the wisdom in that book to persuade the individual, you study on their playground and you prove them wrong, they won't. It doesn't matter. That ain't going to work because if God does this by force, they're not going to repent. What makes you think all of that's going to make them change their minds? And you think you can bring revival to America? Uh-uh. No. The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, obviously, I'm not telling you to give up those things. You can't be such a pessimist that, oh, he or she is going to hell. No. Who were you before you got saved, huh? Aren't you glad someone did not give up praying for you and, and showing a good testimony to you, being loving to you, gracious to you, patience to you, showing a good testimony? There is hope for people out there. But guess what? It's very far and few in between. That's the overall count. All right. Uh, Revelation 10 will be very interesting. So I'll cover Revelation 10 next time about the little book, about that mighty angel, which I have some interesting thoughts on.